JHK here for the All-Star, and joining me right now is Canadian lightweight Kyle Prepolek. Kyle, thank you so much, man. It's been a few years since we've last seen you in that cage. How is life treating you? Uh, you know, so far so good. I'm just glad I'm uh, able to be back and uh, enjoy the sport that I love so much. So uh, I'm just glad I can, you know, Canada's finally coming back and we're able to get shows going, get our athletes going to the big stage again. And uh, it's, it feels good. <laughs> it does. It does. Right. And I know Canada has had some extreme restrictions put on everybody and, and especially the fighters. Uh, I, I think I was talking to Tanner Bozer and he was telling me that police was coming to the gym to stop people from training. And, and you know, when you're a professional, you're taking away the livelihood, right, of, of these fighters. So it's kind of a, a hard situation for you guys. Yeah, like uh, different areas, right? Like, and sometimes, like like you were just saying, how, uh, how his is so extreme and it's just like, man, that's his livelihood. How isn't that, like, you know, essential. That's, that's his life, his career that puts food on his table, you know, like he's got to do what he's got to do. Like leave the guy alone, you know? And what about oh. you? How did it affect you? Um, we had to like, basically over here, it was the same thing. Like we'd have, pe there's people that would drive around or knock on the doors or windows, but it's like, we'd go to people's houses, you know, train in garages or, you know, when there was like a restriction lifted, it's like, all right, let's, let's go like get all the teammates together and let's just let's get in while we can. Cause you don't know, like who knows what's going to happen next. Like, or if it's going to be another strict lockdown or if it's going to open up like this, this is the time where we got to seize everything we can. Cause you don't know how life's going to, going to go at that point. So yeah, that was basically how we had to struggle and persevere, adapt secret training basically. And, uh, or if you, uh, had the time and money to, uh, go fly off to the States or, for me, if I had my visa, I would just go drive. But because I don't have my visa yet, it's still pending. But uh, I would just drive over. But now I have to fly over from a 10-minute drive. And it's just like, it's not worth it at that point. Yeah, definitely. That is that is very weird. Like, you're 10 yeah. minutes away in a car, but you have to fly. I don't understand, like, some of the things that they're doing. But, uh, hey, yeah. you survived <laughs> through it, man. You're having a fight coming up on November 19th. But before we talk about the fight, I wanted to go back a little bit and talk about the UFC. You went into UFC, you, you, you dropped back-to-back. -back. I expected a third fight, man. What exactly happened with your situation? Um, we were kind of expecting a third fight, too, but uh, due to my, like, medical suspension, it was a uh, medical suspension until, uh, like, proven otherwise. And now that, we, you know, we have a solution because uh, the last fight when I went and fought uh, Austin Hubbard, uh, mm -hmm. my uh, legs went into rhabdo. So after that, uh, I got home after the fights, uh, flew home, went to the hospital, you know, they put me with an IV and the only thing you can really do with rabbit is you got to stay hydrated to, uh, and keep drinking water to keep flushing your kidneys. That way, you know, don't go into kidney failure and all that. And just cause the muscles are dying in my legs. So, uh, yeah, I, we were trying to figure that out after, I don't know how many years, like it would take too long to tally up, but for all the instances that it has happened, um, you know, we had a couple of neurologists and the UFC team actually had me go to the States for tests and do all that stuff. But I was fortunate enough to get a muscle biopsy here to figure out what the issue was. And now we know what the issue is and how to prevent it. So we're taking all the right measures and the right uh, dietary supplements to take and just the proper things to do. Now there's like, there's nothing that can hold me back now that we know how to prevent this. So Basically, now just fight, get a few wins, or even, you know, this this win could bring it right back for either of us, really. Um, get back into UFC to show them, like, you know, I'm healthy, you know, uh, basically show them, like, hey, you made a mistake. Uh, can I come back, basically? <laughs> you know, like, just got to show my worth and, you know, be entertaining and, uh, you know, be a highlight reel, you know. How was it, man? Deal is that something that you've been dealing with throughout your career and it just got really bad after the Hupper fight? I uh, like, honestly, it's been on and off. Like the first time it ever happened, I was just like, okay, I just cut too much weight. My body was just like, the hell are you doing? Uh, when I went to 145, that's when it first happened, when it first triggered. And I was like, man, what's going on with my calves? Like they're blowing up like footballs. And I'm like, I can't walk. Like this isn't cool. And then uh, it was gone for a bit. And then... I was like, okay, maybe it's the cuts. 
and and then I'm like doing too much or I'm holding myself too low, which we figured out I was holding my body weight too low by dieting so like hardcore while training so hard and not replenishing enough that I was doing the damage. So when I re- would rehydrate, then the, the rhabdo would just pop up. So I got to do more of like, a, I guess, more of like a harder cut. So go through hell, fight easy instead of cut easy, fight through hell type of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's been on and off. Like it's happened on and off for six fights now. So, but throughout 10 years, it would, it would be random. So we would never know like, oh, why is it happening? Oh, maybe it's just a bad cut, right? So, but we did the, like I said, uh, we did the biopsy, figured out it's a deficiency, uh, like a gen- genetic disorder with CPT2 deficiency, pretty sure it's called. And uh, yeah, so here I am now. <laughs> How has that changed your mentality or your outlook on the sport? Uh, my mentality is now it's like not so much in the in my mind where I'm like, are my legs going to fail me today? It's like, no, nah, we're going to go in there with all the confidence and no matter what, my legs are going to be okay and I'm going to be good to go and, you know, going to be able to be my 100% self and be able to do what I do best. Like when I fought like Cody Fister or, even even though I lost against Nordy to uh, to live and on a week's notice, you know, like I want to be able to perform and be that great athlete and fighter that I know that I can be and really show the world that I can do that stuff. So just one day at a time, one fight at a time and uh, going to try and prove, well, going to prove that on the 19th. <laughs> I, I feel like you're unfairly released, man, because like you said, people don't remember you stepped in on really short notice against Nordi Talib, which is a monster, right, at welterweight. And then you yeah. actually, and then you went down to lightweight and faced Austin Herbert, who's a dog, right? He, he fights anybody. Even he had issues with his leg. Remember he, his leg? They had to cut yeah. it open after a fight. That was crazy. Yeah, he got, that was some, uh, that was crazy. I didn't expect him, like, you know, I threw, I don't know, I think there was 12 leg kicks on that side because he would switch. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to blast it. But I didn't think he was going to go into compartment syndrome. Like, we don't go in there trying to be like, all right, I want to get this guy amputated, you know? It's like, no, we just want to win and, you know, make sure this guy's good to fight another day. And, you know, we're all athletes and, you know, sportsmen, you know, we're not out there to, like, actually kill each other. Like, we are, but we're not at the same time. Let's go to uh, November 19th, Samurai MMA 1. It's their inaugural event. They chose you to be their main event against Michael uh, Dufort. How did this fight come together? Um... That's a very good question. I remember one day the promoter messaging me and I was like, oh, sweet. Like, this is like, to me, I was like, Canada's coming back, you know, like, this is sick, like about time. Like, I'm so excited. Like, I cannot wait. And then I was like, all right, you got to message my, you know, coach and manager, Reno. And then he messaged me and was like, hey, how would you like to go uh, fight Michael Dufort? And I'm like, that'd be fantastic. You know, this guy's a great fighter, you know, like. Uh, what is he eight and three and like the last guy he lost to was actually you know a training partner and friend of mine Jesse Ronson and he's a stud and he's in UFC you know like he well he just got back and then you know on that big win and uh on Fight Island so it's like you know he's top caliber so like I beat him that could put me right back in the loop to you know get back to UFC and get to my goal and uh keep chasing that dream right so um yeah, I was I was pretty pumped when the promoter like messaged me and you know got a hold to my coach after because I was like I don't know what you want me to say or like what what you want me to do because Reno deals with the paperwork and you know the negotiations and I'm just there to train and fight you know like <laughs> well let's keep it simple <laughs> but uh yeah that that was basically what happened and I, then ever since then uh, we heard the news I was I've been stoked since so now here we are and only less than three weeks can't wait. Yeah, for sure. And uh, was it hard for you to get matched up before that? Um, Before that, like, I went and purchased a visa. You know, I get, got in touch with a, a few lawyers whatever, and whatnot. And because uh, I was like, man, the States is still going. Uh, Canada is up and down. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, some shows are happening, but then they're canceling due to like COVID lockdown number two or and then three and then whatever restriction it was on. And then it's just like, well, we could fly you out short notice or, you know, if you got your visa, we can bring you to the States. So I'm like, sweet, let's let's get that visa. And um, it's basically been a waiting game to try and get either matched up for something here or hopefully get that visa and then go fight somewhere in the States. And uh, so far, uh, Canada 
is ahead of that right now. So, yeah. All right. Well, with this matchup, man, you mentioned for a little bit. What do you think about the stylistic aspect of it? Uh, stylistically, like, I... Mm -hmm. The way I see it, you know, like, I like to strike. You know, if I have to go to the ground, I will. Uh, you have to be great everywhere in the sport, especially at this level. Um, you know, he's good everywhere, and but he's not anywhere. Like, he kind of reminds me almost like, uh, uh, what's his name? Like, like a Rory McDonald. He knows how to, he's good everywhere, but he's not excellent anywhere. So he, like, no matter what, he's dangerous everywhere, but he's not great anywhere where, you know, I'm great, obviously, I'm going to think I'm great because that's, that's just the mentality I have. Uh, in striking, that's where I feel I am superior. And uh, even with my athleticism and what a lot of people don't know is like uh, over the past couple of years since the whole COVID thing, it's like I've just been focused on strictly just wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu. So now it's like a totally new ball game that I have like helped, you know, make myself more complete and become that greater mixed martial artist instead of just being – you know, normal, well-rounded. I want to be great everywhere and excel at those, you know, certain areas. Um, especially right now in the MMA world, like wrestlers are just taking over and it's, it's great and all like, I, I love seeing people just get like dominated, like back when, you know, GSP, Matt Hughes, uh, Randy Couture, you know, the chocolate out and like all the, Khabib, obviously, yeah, even Islam, a little, a little savage, <laughs> but, uh, I want to make uh, striking great, you know, like I want to show that strikers can be dangerous everywhere. Even if they go to the ground, just get right back up and just, you know, starch people. Yeah. So that's, that's my, <laughs> Yeah, I see, you know, a certain percentage of fighters during like this whole last two years of, you know, inactivity for some people, they, they've taken that and, and focused like yourself on something that they feel like they need to improve on tremendously. And two years of investment is a long time and a lot of development. And then there's the other side of guys that just maintain because they thought they were going to fight in two months or three months and they just got extended and extended. So someone like you, I think you come back as a whole nother fighter. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 how I feel. And that's kind of like how, you know, even like my coach and team feels are just like, you know, this it's kind of like it's it, it did suck it, not only just for like athletes but most of the Canada and that, when we were dealing with that situation and uh, the pandemic obviously but uh it was almost like a a little blessing in disguise being like okay you know we can't really you know do all the crazy things that we used to be able to do and train how we normally would but now we can just focus on these things that are there because we don't know when fights are going to happen so you know grappling all the time especially grappling is the hardest I feel is the hardest part of all sports in general like i think you know wrestling and you know that whole submission grappling is the most tiring in mma because anybody could stand there and just throw a bomb and get lucky but pure grappling is like that's pure strength and cardio and just like that human chess match so i feel like you know getting better at that is going to help implement my game and become even a better striker because i can you know not only defend these guys but i could submit them put them in dangerous spots and then get on top and just smash somebody's face off. So that's uh, it's a little blessing in disguise, I guess. <laughs> so with, with all this development, with, with, your, with your tools, you know, stuff that we haven't seen from you yet, what, do you, what, what can we expect out of you in this performance coming up? Uh, I definitely uh, more well-rounded, uh, more precise, more athletic, and uh, higher fight IQ experience version of myself like uh basically Kyle prep 2.0 <laughs> for sure and uh you know there were some rumors that the UFC is going back to Canada next year you live in Canada you know what's going on do you believe these rumors honestly with the UFC they're the ones that uh were the only ones that were able to stay during that whole pandemic getting fights and everything done so you know what it won't surprise me because uh the UFC gets it done like they they're all business, and, you know, if they say they're going to go and do it, I I kind of can believe that they're going to go and do it, whether it's, like, in Quebec or in Toronto or in somewhere in Alberta or B.C. It could be anywhere. So uh, I don't know the date because I don't know if that's been posted yet, but I would assume probably sometime in the spring I could see them coming to Canada for sure and making a big impact. 
And I would think that, you know, if you pick up a big win here against a guy that's trying to get into the UFC just like you, you'd be on the short list for that card. Why would you not be? Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. I like being, you know, uh, even after fights, I still like to stay in shape and, you know, be active just in case because you never know. I can get that opportunity like I did against Nordin. And, uh, yeah, it's not a fight camp, but you know what? If I'm, if you always stay ready, you don't have to get ready because, you know, that, that's the best way to look at it, right? Like, there's times, like, uh, what's her name that just fought the Canadian girl, Loopy? She's like, hey, you want to fight? Yeah, let's go. But, like, one after another, right? Like, she fought 20 weeks that's gangster you know or like even like uh cowboy Cerrone is just like oh you know I'll, I'll fight this week oh you need me in a couple weeks all right I'm in and then it's just like man this guy's a beast like I, I want to be like those guys you know like I just you need me to fight all right I'm there even like Dan Hooker you need me to fight I'm there let's go <laughs> yeah it, it's that nothing to lose attitude that you could take into a fight that makes you very dangerous yeah yeah, yeah you ain't wrong <laughs> yeah. uh one last thing man um open judging you know it's slowly being accepted you know some japanese promotions do it right now kansas does it in the u.s colorado recently adopted it what is your take on open judging and the impact it will have on fights uh i'm not too sure what about like what is the open judging if you don't open mind me judging asking. is between rounds they will tell you what the judges scored that previous round so you will know exactly who's winning the fight as the fight goes between oh. rounds oh Oh, that's cool. Hey, I just learned something new today. Um, I think it's good, but I think it's bad at the same time. Because it's like, I think there's more pros to it, but also cons. Because it's like, if a guy knows he's too, up to nothing, then he can just chill or be lazy, you know, and just like play it safe. If a guy doesn't know, and it's like, oh man, this could be 1-1, one, one, then you get, you know, someone who's going to be, okay, this is our last round. We got to go at it. We got to give it our all. Who's going to win and sh really show the judges who actually won? Um, I think it's cool. Um, I think it should be more known to like the coaches and if they want to disclose that with their, uh, with their, with their fighter, I think that'd be better just in case. Cause it's like, you don't want your fighter to get lazy and all of a sudden get caught. Right. And it's like, Oh yeah, you're, you're up three to four and we're in the, we're going to the fifth round and, you know, and then all of a sudden you get caught because you, you got, you got caught slipping basically and you're being lazy. So it, it varies to me. I think it's cool because it's like, all right, it gives you some reassurance to be like, okay, I just got to keep this pace, maintain it, and make sure I make a, like a valid statement to the judges that I'm winning each round, each fight, and uh, I will become victor. At the same time, I think, yeah, you know what? That's actually pretty cool. I, I want to see how it plays out more. You know, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think so. I think it's cool. What about a scoreboard in the arena for every round? Like, you, like you know, when you go to a hockey game, if you go to a baseball game, once you walk into the stadium or the arena, what do you look at first? You look at the yeah, scoreboard, look, right? Yeah, you look at the scoreboard just to see the shots and or yeah. who's got, like, power play points or, exactly. you know, penalties, whatever. Yeah. That'd so be pretty cool. Think, yeah. The live experience would be different, I think. You walk in and you see, like, oh, this dude's winning the round, and then you look in the cage, and then, you know, one guy's beating the hell out of the other guy, right? So it's, it's, uh, yeah. I think it can change a lot of things, good and bad, you know, like you said. They got to fix, yeah. they got, they got some little tweaks, but they, you know, they got to fix those as they go and as people, more, uh, regions adopt open scoring. But, anyways, you got a fight, yeah, man. That's... November nineteenth. There's no open scoring with that one. The Samurai Everybody won main event. Montreal, Canada. Thank you so much, Kyle, for the time and uh, good luck on yeah. the fight and good luck on your journey back to the UFC. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.